Welcome to another session of Microengineering. In today's session, we are going to discuss about Magnetron. Please note, all the diagrams and the, uh, and the explanation of this has been taken from Electronic Communication Systems from Kennedy Book. First, we will start with the constructional diagram of magnetron. Please note, magnetron comes under the category called as M. M means cross field 2, in which electric field and magnetic field both will be in direction perpendicular to the flow of electrons. Both are perpendicular to each other. Cross field 2. Now, in magnetron, normally, how many cavities do we have? We can have number of cavities as 4, 8, 16. Now, what do you mean by cavities is that you can see this diagram over here. These are like, uh, can you see this round round structures? These are nothing but but the anodes, anode cavities. This at the center, you have the cathode. So, the anode cavities are actually arranged like ice cream cups over here. Can you see? Like a cone like thing. I think that's the number of cavities are normally 4, 8 or 16. Now, why do you have this specific number is because we need to have it mostly as 4 or multiples of 4 is because to have and to make them work as an oscillator, the phase difference between the anode cavities has to be always equal to pi. Remember, pi mode of oscillation. Remember, what did I say? It has to be always pi mode of oscillation. To get the pi phase difference between the anode cavities, it is better to have it as number as 4 or 8 or 16. Normally, a tendency is to draw it as Four, four number of cavities. So the constructional diagram has a uh, cathode in the center, you have the cathode at the center, and all the anode cavities arranged as ice cream cones above it. Now we start with how does a magnetron work? Magnetron works with as a cross field. Tube. So electric field and magnetic field both has to be there. First, we need to understand how a magnetic field works on an electron flow. Please note. Suppose a magnetic field is present in the anode cavity. These are anode cavity. For example, I'm taking these to be as anode cavity. Just for example, these are anode cavities. These things no, which has been shown by yellow are all anode cavities. And this is the cathode. This is the cathode. You can very well see. And suppose the electrons are going to be coming out from there. Coming out, the electrons are going to come out. Now, depending upon the type of the strength of the magnetic field present in the anode cavities, it decides the direction at which your electron is going to enter the anode cavity or not going to enter. Now, for example, suppose the electron X is coming out from the cathode. Mostly electrons which come out from the cathode is supposed to go into the anode normally. So what happens is suppose electric field, sorry, so magnetic field is present in this anode cavity and it is it, it is not so strong. It is very little. So the electrons will come and maybe come till here and enter also. Suppose the type of electric field, uh, magnetic field present is slightly strong. So what happens? The electron comes, electron Y, it will just come and it cannot enter the uh, anode cavity. It will just uh, maybe come and maybe slightly grace out, you know, slightly grace out. And can you see the way it has grazed out? It will be turning towards the left always. It is always turning towards it. That is the behavior of an electron under the influence of magnetic field. Now, uh, let me take some other color maybe. So, I am taking a green color. I hope you can see it or no, maybe a purple color. Now, the electron Z, what happens? The electric field is stronger compared to the earlier one. Why? The electron comes out, it fully graces out. Cannot move inside only because it is strong. And at the last one is the last electron. Can you see the condition of the last one? The last one just comes out the electric and the magnetic field is so strong, it can't even think of going to the anode cavities. It just returns back to the cathode cavity. Remember when something like this happens, what happens is your back heating is happening because electrons is emitted from the cathode. It cannot reach the anode and it comes back to the cathode. So, it, this, uh, it gives rise to a back heating. For during that time, magnetron is uh, kept switched off for some time and again restarted. Actually, not so good. Right. So, now we are going to start with pi mode of oscillation. Don't get worried, this diagram is very simple, very easy. Now, I am assuming that you have heard the earlier slide explanation and then coming to this. So, what will happen is the electron, suppose, uh, suppose I am taking an example of electron A, okay. I am taking an example of electron A and this electron comes out 
and here you can see the dotted lines the dotted lines are nothing but the magnetic field and you can see these things uh, like this uh, arcs these are nothing but your electric fields so electric field is present in this interaction space i'm just highlighting it and electric field is present in this interaction space and your magnetic field is present as dot 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 in all the anode cathodes am i right now what happens when electrons are starting now when electrons are emitted from the cathode what do you think will happen the electrons when they are emitted from the cathode they will come out depending upon the strength of the magnetic field they will they might go till here they grace the anode cavities and go to different cavities now what we do is that to make sure that the electrons are attracted towards the neighboring poles the neighboring cavities are all alternatively polarized can you see this plus sign can you see this minus sign is they are alternatively polarized so that the electrons do not lose their effect and they are going to each and every cavities now please note when electron a is emitted out suppose electron a is emitted out what does electron a do it is moving out from the cathode and it is moving towards the electric field now electric field are shown by this i told you before also are shown by these arcs because dot is magnetic field and electric field is present in the interaction mark so what happens electron these electric uh, sorry the electrons will come under the influence of tangential type of electric field tangential type of electric field and the tangential velocity of electrons both will start you can say sort of repel each other as a result whatever energy is present with the electric field will be given to the wave the wave gets amplified and this process will continue and will we will adjust the magnetic field in such a way that the electrons will not enter the anode cavities but make sure that it is spending maximum time in all the interaction spaces losing its energy to the rf wave and then finally after giving all the energy it returns back to the uh, cathode now these electrons which are doing all this process maybe electron a b you know all this a b c c all these electrons are losing the energies then it is fine but the electrons which are not losing the energies and immediately going back to the cathode are called as unfavorable electrons means we would like to have favorable electrons which are spending maximum time in interaction spaces and giving its energy to the rf field unfavorable electrons are not uh, that much uh, preferred but there is a process by which unfavorable electrons can be also converted into favorable electrons that process is called as phase focusing effect this the same explanation about uh, phase, uh, sorry pi mode of oscillation has been explained over here for different type of electrons you may very well understand the difference between uh, the favorable electrons and unfavorable electrons magnetron would love to have maximum number of favorable electrons here the effect of same thing i told you about the unfavorable electrons has been told and uh, if it is returning back to the cathode it is bad so what do we do we just shut down the magnetron for some time and to maintain the correct cathode temperature now we'll see the phase focusing effect in the phase focusing effect what happens is that this is to convert the unfavorable electrons to some favorable phase so how what do we do these electrons uh, the unfavorable electrons instead of they coming under the tangential electric field as compared to pi mode of oscillations we will allow it to come through the radial electric field now radial electric field something radial means what do you think it is going to look like radials means something like this so radial electric field is already in this direction and electron is coming under this influence both will repel each other and electron will lose its energy to your rf wave and the electron just because of the influence of the magnetic field uh, in the anode cavity up the electron will start moving in the left hand side direction now this process which takes place takes place in a bunch so in a bunch so what does it look as like? if it is happening in a bunch can i say that it looks like something like a spoke of a wheel does it look like a spoke of a wheel students like a bunch it happens because electrons is always moving in a anti clockwise direction due to the effect of magnetic field it looks like a spoke of a wheel this is called as phase focusing effects uh, process of converting unfavorable electrons to favorable and this is done under the radial electric field there is also a process called as strapping strapping means mode jumping we are expecting that uh, pi mode of oscillation should take place pi mode of oscillation means the phase difference between the uh, uh, anode cavities I'm, i'm talking about these anode cavities has to be always pi so that we get sustained oscillations now what happens is that uh, these anode cavities are actually very near to each other there are tendency that pi mode of oscillations tend to jump jump means not exactly at pi maybe at pi by 2 or not pi by 2 so very near to pi the oscillations may not be sustained So what do I do is that we know it is alternatively polarized. 
So all the plus ones, I will strap them together using a wire and all the negative ones will be strapped together. By this method, I can avoid more jumping. I hope you understood about magnetron. We will now go on to the derivations of magnetron in the next session. Thank you.